If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this exciting episode of Mind Pump, <laughs> we talk about the book Hip Makers. This is in the intro, by the way. We ch- talk about challenging fitness dogma. It's kind of what we do all the time. And then I get into a debate with Adam over water intake. Should you or should you not be drinking a ton of water? Do I win this debate again, or is this the one time Adam actually wins? Probably not. You'll find out when you listen to this episode. And then we talk about my asymmetrical tonsil and how I found out that I had one. Find out how Sal found out. (laughs) Uh, Then we get into the questions. The first question that we answer is, should you not deadlift and squat because it will thicken your waist? Uh, The next question is, what are you most afraid of for your kids with advertising in the fitness industry? Me and Justin have a lot to say about that. Probably a good idea not to have any. And uh, that's Adam's opinion. Then we get into the old controversy, high-intensity interval training cardio versus low-intensity steady-state cardio. The or ac- not at all. The acronyms are HIT and LIS. Which one's the most effective one for burning body fat and getting on stage? And finally, someone asked us, How do we reconcile the fact-based information that we share on the show with someone like Paul Check, who actively rebukes all scientific understanding? Yes, I know the question was asked crazy. Yes, I I disagree with it, but we answer it anyway in this episode of Mind Pump. And then, huge announcement. Oh, I'm so pumped for this right here. So, I've got a ton of people that have been inboxing about... um, I have a friend who I've been trying to get to listen to Mind Pump, and they haven't listened to Mind Pump yet, and the program's been amazing, yada, yada, yada. And so I think, and Sal actually came up with this, and I think it's a brilliant idea, which is giving away a super bundle. If we, if you purchase a super bundle, you will be able to gift a full bundle to a friend. So it's like a, a two-for-one or buy-one, get-one type of deal, and- This is actually a legit concern. I've had uh, husbands and wives uh, message us. We've had friends message us and say, hey, we both want to follow the program. Um, You know, can I just, you know, how can we work this out or whatever? And I think this is great. People like to work out together. The Super Bundle includes all of our programs. So it's it's got everything. It has MAPS Anabolic, uh, our foundational program, MAPS Performance, which is our performance-based, mobility-based program. It's got MAPS Aesthetic which is our uh, competition-based program, Um, and then MAPS Prime, which teaches you how to self-assess. What else does it include? Are we going to do uh, either or bundle, or is this only for the super bundle? Are we going to do the RGB bundle also, or are we only doing the super bundle that we'll be able to give it for free? You know, I think the super bundle, because it has everything. Yeah. It's got everything in it, right? What else does the super bundle have, Doug? Doesn't it have some more more stuff? It's got MAPS anywhere. That's right, the equipment-free MAPS program. So when you basically you enroll in the super bundle and then you get to give a free super bundle to whoever you want, which um, literally is setting you and your friend or spouse or whoever you're you're giving the free one to, setting you guys up for the next year's worth of training. It's basically a year's worth of exercise programming. You can find this. Oh, and by the way, this promotion is not going to be going on yeah, all no, month long. No, uh, this is one of the few promotions we're going to actually end uh, even before the halfway point of the month. I believe twelve days is what Doug said. Twelve days, right? So. The 12th, this promotion will end. It's a very short one, so tell your friend, get them on board. Uh, you can find out about this promotion or enroll in this promotion uh, at mindpumpmedia.com. Don't wait. Spread the maps, love everybody. The book Hitmakers talks about like almost every movie that we watch is the same thing, just delivered differently. You mean yeah. the Warrior's uh, Journey? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, that one's an example of the Warrior's Journey, but sometimes it's not. Joseph the, Campbell, man. Almost every movie we watch, is it had, there was another familiar story mm-hmm. just told differently. How uh, funny is that? Like, there's certain patterns that we just love. Like, mm-hmm. like you ever listen to, like, music, for example. EDM is great for this. There's a formula with electronic music. Yes, absolutely. Like, it, it starts off kind of slow, then it builds up, builds up, builds up, crescendo, boom, the beat drops, everybody goes crazy, and then it goes back and starts over again, and yeah. it gets you excited. Well, that's it's so hilarious. Hitmakers. I can't it, wait till computers design. Hitmakers music. is the science of popularity. <laughs> so that's that's the message of the book is the science behind popularity, and it actually opens up and starts with uh, music is what it gets into, and it ta- and it, they've been doing that since the twenties, 
And maybe we didn't understand the science of it in the 20s, but we have definitely uh, mastered it now mm. today, like mm-hmm. as far as how we make people feel uh, through through music, through sound, through video, through movies. It's, it was a great book. I tell you what, uh, that's a... I haven't posted about it yet, um, but I will post uh, on IG real soon here as my as far as my review. But those that listen to this first, uh, definitely one of the better books I read this year. Slow start to it. Um, it almost lost me at the beginning because it does get into the history in the 20s. And I really wasn't interested in like music in the 20s. Uh, so, yeah, it was. But it was it was important to yeah. the entire story of the uh, and the book. So once you get past the beginning, it really picks up. And then literally the whole book is worth the final chapter, in my opinion. I mean, the, the last chapter. Really? Yeah, because it gets into Disney and stuff like that and, and just understanding the science behind how they've done everything is pretty fascinating. I'll check so, it out. Yeah, you guys will like mm-hmm. it. I'll check it out. Man, they, I've been, they make magic. I've been uh, I've been doing a little re- uh, reading and postulating on, uh, uh, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to take things that we consider dogma or like, you know, like, uh, what's the word? Gospel mm. in fitness and challenging it just for the sake of it. Yeah. And you know what's funny? Most of the time I find that that it's bullshit or it's too much. You know what I mean? What do you mean? So like protein intake, you know, or, you know, frequent, you know, eating small meals throughout the day. Oh, you mean like any any common knowledge. Like like things that we, things that we accept is like, you know what I mean? Like, oh no, that's for sure. You have to do that or that's the way it is. Right. Yeah. Like you're talking about water. Water intake is one that we don't, everybody's just, it's like drink lots of water. You profess that you have to. Oh, you're going to go, you're going to go here, huh? Oh, I'm going (laughs) to, I'm going to shit in your water. Oh, wow. Hey man. Okay. No, you know, I'll tell you what. Bring it on, bring it on, Sally. I actually, I like. This is a good topic, and I and I'm passionate. Oh, about I don't know. I was going to debate you over it. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, <laughs> are you sure you want to do that? Well, I know where you're going this with is this. Is getting recorded? And, yeah, go <laughs> for it. Go for it. Go ahead and go ahead and drop your knowledge. Real so, quick. no, when it comes to when it when it comes to water, I use a Brita filter. So, yeah, I don't want to do that shit. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, when it comes to not talking about filtered water versus unfiltered water, whatever. When it comes to water intake, positively what, charged. What do we hear? <laughs> what do we hear in? Uh, as long as it has electrolytes. In in fitness, like what do like Adam? You're in the drink tons of water, right? Drink tons of water. Like yeah. what's the common things that you hear in the especially the muscle building world at with water? At least a gallon plus a day. A gallon plus a day. Like it's just it's just like, like you black and white. Carry a jug. Yeah. 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 And then why do they say you need to drink tons of water? What's well, the benefit? To stay hydrated, metabolism. There you go. Yeah. Metabolism. What else? Flushes uh, out. Yeah, flushes toxins. out. Toxins. Yeah, yeah. Of course. That, now that's where the okay. Well, I'm definitely not going to debate yeah. you on that. <laughs> Helps you build muscle, burn yeah. body fat. Here, so here's what's interesting about water intake is num- first off, it's one of the most individualized things you could possibly when it comes to it's like it's as if not more individualized than food intake because your level of hydration or required the amount of water that you need changes. Not just weekly, but daily, and also within the day, mm. it changes. So, where's your barometer? Is it how bad your pee stinks, or what? Uh, it's how salty it tastes. No, I'm Ooh. just kidding. It's, <laughs> it's more about um, really just our body has these signals that tells us when we should have water, and those signals we evolved with, and they're pretty, they're more accurate than any estimation that we can come up with. So I did some research. Well, they say that the the feeling of thirst is actually signs of already dehydration starting, no, that's, right? That's yeah, that's that's false. Mm-hmm. That's actually not true. Sign <laughs> sign of thirst is to prevent uh, dehydration. It's actually a pretty good uh, measure. Now, if you're not in tune with your body, if you tend, you know, you're super busy and you're not paying attention, uh, or if you're unhealthy, that may be off. Just like any other signal may be off. But in reality, being thirsty is kind of a good signal. But here's what's interesting: I did some research and I found that. Did you guys know that there are as many, if not more, hospital uh, hospitalizations for what's called hyper hyponutremia, which is uh, excess water, than dehydration? Do you guys know that? More? M- yeah, wow. people actually get, uh, especially as people age, and especially with thing when people have health issues like kidney issues and heart uh, issues, and when it comes to athletes. Hmm. Um, it's estimated that uh, as much uh, or uh, 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 an e- about an equal percentage of athletes drink too much water as those that drink too little water. And the side effects of drinking too much water are like reduced performance, brain fog, uh, heart, uh, irregular heartbeats. Um, you can actually damage your liver from too much water. And I was, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking like, 
Hmm. You know, I, I know why we tell people to drink more water, and it's it's typically because in certain cases people maybe not drink too much or drink too much soda and other types of beverages. Well, about when you're super depleted, or like let's say because they they used to profess this quite a bit when there was like high humidity and heat, and you know, like you, it was apparent you'd lose like five ten pounds of, of water weight, mm-hmm. you know, throughout the day, and so it was like this preventative measure that you had to overhydrate. Uh, because you know the the sweat factor and like how much like actual weight you were gonna lose being uh, you know <clears throat> detrimental. Well, so, there's a lot of uh, women in particular um, actually are are have a higher likelihood of suffering from the effects of too much too much water. They don't require as much as men do. Their body actually holds on to water much better than ours do. Hmm. Um, and of course, they're smaller typically, right? Um, but think about all the things that affect how much water your body may need for optimal health, right? I mean, everything from your body's chemistry to your nutrition to your sleep to your activity levels. Are you in a hot climate? How much sodium you've consumed or other electrolyte uh, levels in your body? It's so different from person to person and from day to day that the advice that we give people in the fitness industry, like drink a gallon of water a day at least, is so ridiculously uh, simplified and potentially could have bad effects on people. I have a theory on that. What's your theory? It's the, it's the same theory that I have with the protein kind of debate that we have. And that's why I was really interested in what direction you were going to go with this because I know that uh, you're not somebody who's like uh, pushes the water intake on people. And I know that I am. And the reason why I am is the same reason why I used to push protein, especially on a lot of my female clients, is because in my 15 years of coaching clients and tracking food and, and paying attention to their intake, uh, most people grossly under ate protein. That's a fact. It's, it's now, you say grossly. Grossly under Most ate. people eat uh, essential amounts of protein. You're talking about um, optimal. Um, levels of protein for yeah, optimal for, muscle for, building. For building muscle. Yeah, 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 because yeah. most people that hire you are looking to build muscle and burn, burn fat. fat. right. Okay, right, right. so yeah, we're not talking about to survive and live. Yeah, we're not yeah. talking about that. Same thing goes for the water thing, okay? the And I think what went wrong in, in fitness and what tends to go wrong in fitness a lot is they take something that's pretty general, which I think if I were to look at, a, a, if we were to screenshot all the people I ever trained and go, look at how many, uh, 80%, let's just say, and that's a totally arbitrary number I'm throwing out there. Let's say 80% of these people uh, did not get enough protein for optimal muscle building. Mm-hmm. So if I can say a majority of my people aren't eating enough, I'm going to come out with this message that says, more protein, you right. guys need more protein. And I know that if I come out with a message like that, that I'm going to positively affect a majority of the people out there that are trying to build muscle because they were probably under eating. And so there is some good that comes from that message. And then we have what happens always in fitness is the pendulum swings from one side to the other side so extreme. Then you got the bodybuilder demographic that is like, more, more is better. So these guys are eating 1.5 to 3 grams of, of protein mm-hmm. per pound of body weight. And the same thing I believe has happened with water. If I were to look at my clients again and took a screenshot of all the clients that I've trained in my career, and I asked them how much water I want you to start tracking and tell me how much water you drink in a day, people grossly under drink water because they're drinking sodas, they're drinking juices, they're drinking all these carbonated bullshit it's for drinks. Me. Is that you? No, I'm just <laughs> they're drinking all this crap and they're not getting enough water. So again, so the question we, is: the question is, is it that they're not drinking enough fluids, or is it that they're drinking too much of other fluids that are not just water? Yeah. In other words, it's not. We didn't say fluid. We're talking about water. Okay. Right, right. They're drinking. They're drinking plenty of fluids. But when we when you drink so do you, when you drink sugar and when you drink coffee, okay, caffeine dehydrates you. So it's like that's a zero zero. Well, so you even though it's ca- in water, it's the well. Caffeine. I want to be. I want to. I need to correct that. Uh, it's a myth that drinking coffee dehydrates you. You still hydrate. You well, actually, it's a it's a it's a zero zero. Because, no, no. You still you still uh, you utilize you get way more water than you lose from the dehydration effects of caffeine. That's a that's a huge myth. And I want to say that I wouldn't say way more it is and, and you're what are you talking about somebody that's drinking a 
a basic coffee drink. You're talking about what most people do, which is an extra shot of espresso inside there or taking way more caffeine it's than It's still you. a lot more water. It's actually fine. It's I a, remember it's that a, same argument for beer. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. It, it, you're, you're, you're fine uh, drinking. Now, does caffeine cause uh, water loss? It does, but uh, it's not like drinking coffee. A cup of coffee is not, it means you're not drinking water. But my, the reason, the, the question I have with, with what you're saying is, is, are they, do they, let's say somebody drinks lots of juice and soda and then they drink a little bit of water. Should they add water to that? Will that benefit them? Or is a lot of the benefit coming from reducing or eliminating all that other shit and replacing it with calorie free water? That's, that's the big question. And how do we know when people. Or, no, or you're someone like me. Okay. Which I'm a good example of this. I can I will go on these kicks where I'll have two diet sodas and a coffee in my that's a day of drinking could end up being a, a one glass or two glasses of water a, a two diet sodas and a cup of coffee yeah and that it, could easily be one of my days and and here and here's the thing like so you're in the category of people that likely require more water consumption for two different reasons number one you're, you have a lot of muscle you sweat daily you exercise at least an hour a day. Um, and you uh, consume uh, high levels of protein. And so those things can definitely uh, definitely require more water intake. It's so individual. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, well, where, yeah, it's they, so where do they create these standards? It, exactly. Again, again, yeah. this this started because people, I'm, I'm not uh, that abnormal. Yeah, I guarantee if most people that are listening right now truly assessed unless they are making an attempt to drink more water the average person coming into the fitness realm saying i'm going to get in shape i want to build muscle i want to burn fat i'm going to start paying attention to these things if they truly assess themselves a majority of people are under drinking water and over drinking stuff that is not ideal for yeah them. and i would so so here's so that's I, where this comes from and this is what i want to see because mm. here's what i'm speculating this is what i want to see i want to see are the benefits, when you tell someone, a random client, and you say, hey, I want you to drink a gallon of water a day, does that mean, does that equate to less? Is that really benefiting them? Does that equate to less uh, soda drinking, less juice drinking, less? Sure. Cal- and of course. Does it, and of course. does it equate to lowered appetite because now you're drinking more water? Absolutely. And that's And that's really. So is that the benefit or is the benefit because you're having tons of water? No, no, no. And, and so that's what, and I that's how I teach it. So if yeah. I told someone drink a gallon of water, I know that it's going to help curb appetite. I know it's going obviously going to hydrate them. I know that if they're drinking that much water, they, they're going to have a hard time getting in diet sodas, juices, and other crap inside their diet. Right. So their real benefits Probably the bulk of the benefits isn't from this great hydration, speeding up your metabolism, mm. or doing something to the body that's um, like amazing because they're having a gallon of water. It's doing a lot of other things. Right. I think. And the, I think. I think a- to to your point, the fitness industry uh, again is as bro science the fuck out of it, and so there's this misconception. But I also want to make sure that when when you come out and say something like that, because I'm very passionate about water and protein and you speak out the other way and then what i see people do is they go like oh shit well sal says people are there's more people drinking too much water than not enough water and then they then they go oh fuck it i'll, I'll go back to my drinking my diet sodas instead no no and, i don't want that message so no, he's just he's just challenging common thought so like that's a common thought process is to just keep drinking more water in so, my opinion it's a good one uh, yeah i want to know a little bit more than okay so if you're saying that there's people in the hospital that have been over, you know, over consuming water. Like, what does that look like? What's the amount? And like, you know, what are the detriments? Uh, it, it, again, <laughs> irregular heartbeat. Um, you know, brain fog, fatigue. It can affect mood. Like, it can cause depression. It can cause faint, feeling faint. Mm. Um, these are all symptoms of having too much water. And here's the other thing. So this is why I want to correct the message because what here's what people are hearing. People are hearing drink lots of water. Now, if I'm the average person, and I don't change my 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 soda intake, my tea intake, my coffee intake, and then I add a shit ton of water on top of it, I may have a problem. I may actually, and this is actually what's happened. This is what. So endurance athletes, uh, for example, are hammered more than anybody else for uh, avoiding dehydration. Mm-hmm. This is like a big thing with endurance athletes. Like, don't be dehydrated. Don't be, especially 10, 20 years ago. Now. 
they've learned that there's a that they need to consume sodium with their water and they need to be careful with their electrolyte imbalance. But before it was like hammer, hammer water, hammer water, and more endurance athletes were having issues with too much water because of that message because they were so worried about it, especially women and especially long endurance events that they were just pounding the water and they were making themselves sick and people are under the impression that there's no detriment. And here's the thing, as with anything, there is an optimal dose and that means that less than that is suboptimal and more than that is suboptimal, but take it another level, push that in either direction and it becomes dangerous and that's what happens with water. And I've I read cases where people would do these water challenges and yeah, die, died, yeah, literally I, fucking die from drinking too much water because their cells that's happened a few times actually drown. So you know the thing it's it's almost like we keep pushing people away from listening to their body when in reality just start to connect to it a little more. And, yeah, but and you, you'll have better yeah, signals. Yeah, but you gotta understand something, man. That's you're a black belt in that, dude. You're a fucking black belt in that. So asking somebody else to be that in tune with their body, a majority of the listeners are white belts, dude. Yeah. You know, well, you're, you, can't, you can't tell somebody. That's why we have generic advice like that. that, that and there, there is generic advice out there that I think, uh, and, I, and I think there's, you, make up good, you make good points. I'm, so I'm not completely debating what you're saying and arguing. I'm just saying that I also want to caution that when we say things like that, that I think... Uh, the recommendation of drinking more water has done more good than it's done harm. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say well, definitely replacing it. You know, there like, you go. Like, like you're saying, uh, like the thought process to have like a soda or a juice or a coffee or you know, let's stick with you know water as here, being the beverage of, here, of choice. Here's your here's the best advice. It, it's I think it's shit advice to tell people drink a gallon of water a day and drink eight out or eight ounces. You know, eight glasses of water and all that. I think that's so general. It's just ridiculous. I also think. Uh, here's the advice that I'll give people. Don't drink anything but water. How about that? Listen to your body. Don't drink anything but water. Don't drink sodas. Don't drink teas. Don't drink whatever. If you want to have a little bit of coffee or a little bit, fine. But the, the vast majority of the fluid that you consume should be water. And I think you'll have pretty much no problems. I mean, uh, you know, what part, what part of alcohol plays a role in that? Uh, alcohol, you know, provides fluids also, believe it or not. Actually, they have some studies to show that beer, Replaces electrolytes and I've stuff seen pretty those well. Studies, yeah, um, <laughs> but again, it's but what like, about what's happening to the liver and kidneys when you're taking in alcohol? And if you're overhydrating, what the stress that it puts on there? And then if you're also having alcohol, that's where that's where I'm going. So with like that. too much water with alcohol, yeah, uh, it's negative effects. Just like having too little water um, with alcohol. Like again, both are bad for you. You're gonna you're, you can call. I mean, li- you can get actually liver cirrhosis. Uh, from consuming too many, uh, from having the electrolyte imbalance, from having too many fluids. So, uh, and I, the reason why I brought it up and I wanted to talk about it is because I know a lot of people are going to freak out because Sal says, you know, the, the advice to drink tons. Of, here's another piece of the advice that I think is hilarious is the drink water throughout the entire day all day long. And the reason why I think that's ridiculous is it completely doesn't match uh, the, how li- the likelihood of how we evolved. I mean, humans definitely lived around water. Well, not just we how we evolve, but also how we how our body works throughout the day. I mean, what what we're doing right now doesn't require a ton of water. Exactly. Right? We're sitting on here talking to Mike, but you better believe in about four hours when I start throwing some weights around. Exactly. Yeah, and think about it around your high and activity. I, I, about it. I, I literally drink three quarters of a gallon of water around my workout. Right. So yeah. and then the rest of the re- the other quarter or so gallon is spread out throughout. The right. So think about it this way. If I'm told, if I'm a, a, a competitor and someone's in my coach is saying, drink one to two gallons of water every day, make sure you drink it throughout the day. Well, when I'm not working out and I'm drinking, you know, 16 ounces of water, the likelihood that I'm drinking too much water and getting negatives is high. The likelihood that I may be drinking enough while I'm working out is, is also is good. It's high. Right. So, it's so it's so dependent on what you're doing at the time, your what you're eating, all these different things that to give these general guidelines. <clears throat> well, I have to de- I, ha- crazy. I have to defend the the coaches and the competitors out there because there de- there is some sort of and I'm not there. I'm like I'm helping somebody right now, right? So we're we're helping Melissa right now get ready for a show. It's her first show, and I I don't have her tracking water yet, but I will soon, and I will give her a generic 
number to follow, but there's a different reason why oh, totally. I have her because I, I'm wanting to see, I'm tracking to see how much water her body loses. And if I don't know, like so if I, for example, let's say I give her the generic advice, Melissa, I want you to drink one gallon of water every single day. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at fluctuations. the fluctuation and then what her body looks like on a half a gallon of water, a quarter gallon of water, and a full gallon of yeah, water. Yeah, you're trying to see measurable like uh, data to, to work with. Well, yeah, and I mean, we, consistent. we know that, what, 60% of our muscles are made up of water, right? So uh, filling up the muscle bellies with water makes an aesthetic change and uh, look, right? Well, especially so, when you're lean. Right, exactly. So for me and, and coaches, so and, and I don't know, I can't speak for all of them because we know that there's a ton of them that are idiots but there 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 might be some that are giving that hey drink a gallon of water and they have the same theory or th the thought process behind why they're doing that like i do which is listen i need you to drink a gallon and i want you to be consistent with that because i need to be consistent with your water loss seeing what your body looks like and then from there is how i'm going to have you adjust that mm -hmm. so there you know when you talk about the competitive level there is a different you got to separate those. Well, here, because here's the other thing to consider too, which was kind of cool. I, I was thinking about this also, and I started doing some reading on it. And we always tend to have water or fluids with us while we're eating. And that may actually be a detriment to a lot of us. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because... Really? Yeah, because... It doesn't help the digestive no, process? No, actually, if anything, it really? dilutes uh, It wow. dilutes the digestive process. It could... Does it dampen, like, your saliva? and Because uh, I, I feel like cotton mouth if I don't have, like, a beverage with me. So that may actually be uh, more of a medical issue. You may have an issue with producing uh, enough saliva. Hmm. Um, but uh, it dilutes stomach acid. I got a medical issue now? <laughs> it could be. Fuck you, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> it, so, I don't like this discussion. So you could uh, you you could be producing uh, excuse me you dilute, dilute stomach acid which changes um, how uh, how you digest food it could cause your stomach to try and produce more acid as a result which can be a problem oh wow um, you could also here's the other thing too we tend to chew uh, way too little I was just gonna yeah, say this for so sure I not. could you're, in your defense of that argument I could definitely see if I didn't have water. It would force me to chew my food probably 30 to 50 times, which is the recommended amount of chewing your food before you swallow it, which if you ever, and people, this is a cool thing I tell people to actually pay attention One, two, to. Three, four, three, it's three, actually, three. You, no one does pain that. The ass. Nobody does that. It's Pay attention the next time you are shoveling food in your face on how little you chew and then swallow it down. Mm-hmm. Like and, and, and take a gulp <laughs> of water with chewing it. is part of I the just unhinge. Chewing oh. is part of the digestive process, and you would be blown away by how many people would eat less calories, be more satiated, and and actually help. You'd be like mindful about it if they were mindful and actually chewed their food in completely before they swallowed it down. Dude. And you got to believe that drinking oh, yeah. fluid. It actually counters that, right? Because you, I could take a bite of something like literally bite of my it, sandwich, it makes room. wash it down with yeah. soda, and I, I just swallow it down. That's a hundred percent what's happening. Yeah, I totally. do that. I do that all the time. I catch myself doing that all the time. And you're right. A big part, not a small part, a big part of digestion happens in the mouth right, with the chew process, with chewing and saliva. And they wrote a whole diet on this. There was actually a book. I can't remember the name of the diet. Deepak Chopra. He talks about this all the time. They, about like how many times you need to chew before you. There's like a whole diet around yeah. like just chewing. Like yeah. if you 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 ha and that's where I came up with this that number. Like I think it's like 52 or something. It's like chew your food 52 times. And they of course a gimmicky sales thing, right? Mm -hmm. Chew your food 52 times every single time you take a bite, and you'll lose 15 pounds. 52 chew diet. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, it is. It's something like that. And you would be surprised how many people's digestive issues become uh get solved with just chewing the i mean no joke i'm not exaggerating oh i believe that, that we, i have we've clients all, we've all done that where you bit something and like and don't you, you feel like, like oh, you fuck, just I you're talking that up more you're just talking to a toddler all the time but, like you know like uh chew your food yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah like well, let's walk carefully yeah, exactly. yeah let's feel your body uh, wipe front to back it's no like, it's when, when you chew properly um, you digest Wipe your, your ass. You pre-digest yeah. your food. You should be able to swallow your, unless you have like like a large ton. I have, actually have a big tonsil on one side, which makes it even more difficult. But just on one side, just one side. Isn't that weird? That is weird. weird. Yeah, I got a story behind that too. If you, uh, <laughs> you I can't wait to hear. Chew, that. <laughs> chew your food well. Um, you should be able to swallow it without any Who, fluids. Who's the guy that told you uh, what that I had a big? I've had it since I was a kid. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It won't go all the way in. Oh. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> Something's blocking it on the left side. Yeah. Oh. It's on the right. <laughs> but if you uh, if you if you should be able to swallow your food without uh, drinking 
fluids with it. And again, you go back to evolution, like humans did not, we were around water. Of course we had to live near water, but we didn't like have jugs of water with us with our meals. We chewed the fuck of it, swallowed it, and uh, we were good. Yeah. So just some in- interesting things. Well, to isn't think this about. why like wine and beer it was like safer, right? To drink versus like sometimes the water. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, is it right. Because it's less- that like a because the alcohol like, killed the bacteria. It was <laughs> less likely to have uh, microbes in it and shit yeah. that would kill you. Yeah, that yeah. makes. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, so let's, get, beer let's get on the beer diet. Yeah, that, exactly. Who's uh, with me? Yeah, yeah okay. so with my tonsil, I've had it since I was a kid, and it's just one side, so it's asymmetrical. Now, if you if if I didn't have that since I was a kid, and I went to the doctor and it just happened, that means you have you might have like cancer right in your throat because it usually it's pretty oh, rare to have one side right. This started your whole paranoia <laughs> process, huh? Yeah. So I've had it since this I was. All, this was also the birth of Kermit. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, I think about that. I'm if, changing. If I if I removed it, I wouldn't sound the same, right? Yeah. So I can't do it anymore. Uh, so anyway, I was it's I was so uniquely you. So I was training my client who was a uh, this was years ago. He's a. Um, ear, nose, and throat specialist. And he told me a joke or something, and uh, I was laughing with my mouth open, and he's like, hold on. He goes, open your mouth again? And I open, and he looks in there, and he's got this concerned look on his face. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I'm like, what, dude? You know, because you guys know me. I'll get paranoid. Yeah. I'm like, what? What's going on? He goes, uh, he goes, uh, how long have you had that that yeah. big tonsil? I'm like, oh, since I was a kid. And he goes, oh, okay. And he goes back to his workout, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, tell me what? And he goes, it's like oh, the nothing. the size of an egg. He goes, nothing. Nothing, you could have cancer. Yeah. He goes, it's probably nothing. You've had it for so long. And I'm like, what do you mean probably nothing? I'm like, what does it mean if that happens? He goes, well, if I see that normally, I assume that it's uh, you know malignant and we got to do a biopsy and this and that. Yeah, but no big deal. Freaked me out, yeah. dude. Freaked me out. For <laughs> I had to have a conversation for like an hour with him to, for him to call me down. Yeah. I, it's <laughs> fucking horrible. Bring on the bird, Doug! <laughs> Chimera Quaz! Today's Quaz is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off! It's the motherfucking Quaz! The eagle has landed! Quaz! Our first question is from Austin Not East. His prep coach says not to deadlift or squat because it will thicken his waist. You know what? True or not true? It'll the funniest, also thicken the, his back. The funniest, God forbid. The funniest part about this is that you were just picking a fight this morning. I saw that. Yeah, I did. Were you in a mood? Uh, what? Were you in a mood? You, you, you do don't do? normally troll. When what do you, you mean? Listen, when you troll, male standards, big chest, really slim little waist. When you yeah. when you troll when you troll my men's physique buddies, <laughs> <laughs> I always know. I always know you're in a mood. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? What no, you so, so <laughs> I, I don't know if someone tagged me if it was in. Oh, uh, did you get tagged on it? It might have been tagged, or it might have been. I might have been just. On Sal the, tags the us this morning on some. Men's I want to start a company called Hourglass Dudes. It was. Com. It was was a men's physique pro and he was uh promoting a waist trainer and uh, sal just tags justin and i and says, stupid yeah. advice <laughs> <laughs> just just straight out yeah just it, stupid yeah. advice yeah. Like, so stupid. so <laughs> you are a moron I'm, sir i might have been in a mood but the the truth is forget the mood part they give advice that's bad all the time, but rarely do they give dangerous advice. That's dangerous advice. So right. I have to say something because I'm looking at it and there's all these comments of people who are like, where do I buy this? Ooh, this is great. Make my waist smaller. And I'm like, oh, fuck. All these people are going to atrophy the, the muscles around their core. It's going to cause problems. I need to say something so that at least when someone's looking at the comments, they see that I said it's there's stupid. counter information. And, yeah. and then underneath it, I explain why it's stupid. So hopefully I prevent, uh, sorry, bro, you're not going to sell as many of your shitty waist trainers, but that's a good thing. Uh, you already deleted your comment. Do deadlifts and squats thicken your waist? Um, well, first I, of all, I, the the waist isn't a muscle. <laughs> no. Okay, so the waist isn't a muscle. It's a general area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what are you working today? Waist. Yeah, yeah. Waist. Yeah. Tra- Wasting. Training, I'm training I'm just the fact that it's called a waist trainer. You yeah. should get punched in the face for wearing yeah. one of those. Yeah. yeah no, it, this is something that, uh, of course, I saw a ton of this in uh, which I like to say I've seen a, a major shift lately, uh, but. The when I started getting into competing and I saw the exercises these guys were doing and I started talking to a lot of the competitors like oh yeah no definitely I don't I don't deadlift uh, or squat at all or barbell squat and I'm like huh 
you don't do the two most important lifts you could possibly do to build muscle on your body and we're in the business of building muscle like that didn't make sense to me it's too hard bro yeah and then when they started explaining like oh it makes my my waist bigger and i'm like explain that to me like i'm totally confused right now on why we would do that and then this was like the first time i'd ever seen this i didn't even know it existed and i started seeing and i started thinking like what the fuck but then i had these people that like swear by it like no bro look at i'll show you pictures before after and then I was like, okay. My coach told me obliques are the devil. And then I realized like what they were doing. And I'm like, oh, you're literally like wearing that thing that tight and you sleep with it. You train with it. You never. Are you talking t- about the waist trainer now? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that what we were talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well the yeah. deadlift and squats. Yeah, that's too. what you were. The guy you commented on yeah, was yeah, yeah. a waist trainer, you know? And I'm like, that's so crazy to me that you would wear this thing all day like a cast and intentionally atrophy those muscles. And then you would eliminate exercises like the deadlift and the squat like it's crazy yeah. now deadlift and deadlifting and squatting does activate the muscles of the core um the muscles of the core what you need to understand they can definitely build but they're the ability of you to, to really build those muscles out and get massive core muscles is pretty small it's not really muscles that hypertrophy the same way like quads do but not only that but if you deadlift for example your back's going to get bigger too and a small waist is only small because of the contrast between your waist right. and your shoulders. So, and that's what these judges see. Right. right. And I'll give you an example. Like me and Adam, if we, sh- if we measured our waist, probably about the same size. If you see a standing in a picture next to each other, Adam's waist appears smaller than mine. It's not because he has a smaller waist. It's because he's got wider shoulders. And this is what you do on stage. Nobody goes and measures your fucking waist. It's about the difference between the shoulders and lats and all that stuff to your waist. And that comes from having muscle, not from not having muscle. But uh, avoiding these two super effective exercises is horrible, horrible advice. And you've got average people who <laughs> don't have this, you know, the, the 0.1% of the genetics that, that these muscle builders have. They don't, they're not taking them out of gear that they're taking. They never get to the ridiculous body fat levels that, they, that these competitors get to. And they're never going to step on stage. And they're hearing this advice thinking, oh, I'm trying to get leaner and I don't want a bigger waist, therefore I'm not going to squat. Well, not only that, I wouldn't have as much of a problem if they just stayed specifically in the performance realm of it, right? Like, so I'm doing this specifically to be judged on stage and like, this is what I'm doing just to kind of cheat my way through the system a little bit to get a a smaller waist versus, you know, I'm selling these things to the general public saying this is a good idea. Yeah, no. Stupid. (laughs) The the most effective thing you could do to shrink your waist by far is get get a bigger back. Get 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 a bigger back and get leaner. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So you did you guys see the uh, Insta story I did just a few days ago where I drew an arrow to my my waist? Did you see that? I drew an no, arrow to so. my waist and I said this is uh, the the only spot that matters or this is all I need to know. And I pointed right to the. So well, I think why I did one on my crotch. Why <laughs> why this has come really popular, especially with like men's physique competitors, bikini, bikini competitors, is that that waist that low back area is a very, very common area for people to store body fat. Oh, I see. And it happens right. to be one of the most stubborn areas for your body to in general. Right? There's a total overgeneralization. Everybody is uniquely different, but especially men, we carry the tire, right? It's, a, it's very common that we carry that low back and belly fat, and the low back fat is the last place to go. So if you've been watching my journey as I'm leaning out right now and getting in competitive-type shape, I'm showing you that, like, even right now, you can see, like, the definition in my back, but then my waist is kind of boxy right now. But it's not going to be a waist trainer or the lack of deadlifts that's going to get rid of that last bit. I will literally, you're going to see my waist come way in, and it will be because I get leaner. And it will take me until I push my body beyond this 5% before you really see it go there. I just had this conversation with Katrina, and she's kind of following the same journey, and I get this a lot, so I, I think this is a great topic. Aside from the, we, we've already covered deadlifting, and squatting. It's you're silly to get rid of those out of your out of your training, and just in my opinion. But as far as the waist thing goes, everybody is going to have these areas on their body where if you get down to seven percent body fat, let's say, you know, which is pretty it's low, gonna hold on for dear life. Well, it's still going to be there. Yeah, it'll be right. There. Even like so, Justin did his like transformation journey when we first started, and he got all ripped and lean. But I guarantee if you asked him, like, did you have areas still where you felt kind of fat or you felt like you were holding fat? So, yes, of course. And and the same thing goes for Sal. Sal's incredibly lean right now, right? 
you're you keep yourself in single digit body fat pretty much year round. But I guarantee if I asked you right now, do you where where's your fat? You would know right where it's at, right? You're, you're, inner thighs. Right. So everybody so everybody has these areas and it's not That's that it's, it's impossible so to get them and it's not that you're going to cheat the system by using some bullshit tool or eliminating exercise. You've got to get leaner. You've got to put yourself cuz you can get and I don't recommend that people get to 1% or 2% body fat, but I guarantee you if you did push to 1% or two percent body fat that fat would go yeah it would eventually go it would definitely end up going at one point and most people have just never pushed their body to that point to see that that, that last bit of their waist because your waist when i get all the way down for stage i mean you can like see my hip bone i mean you can see my you can literally see all of that when i'm all the way down but i have to get down to that and you won't see it until then. and here's the other thing to consider like when you look at somebody in li- in real life that looks uh, truly impressive, who's lean, muscular, and looks like they can move and function. They have a built core. They have a well-developed core. Yeah. Women, too. You know a lot of these CrossFit women that other women are like, oh, my God, that's what I want to look like. And by the way, I don't necessarily hear a lot of women say they want to look like uh, – It's there are some, but a figure or a fitness competitor – how they want to look every day. Most women are like, no, 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 that's too too much. I don't want to look like that every single day. It looks cool, but but when they look at these CrossFit girls who look like who are performing and doing these workouts and stuff, a lot of women will be like, oh my god, that looks awesome, looks strong. That's what I want to look at look like. And you look at these women, and they have very well developed core and obliques. Mm-hmm. It's not going to make you look bad to have well developed obliques. Obliques in sports they serve a function. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, come on. Your obliques are. As important, if not more Stabilizing important. Stabilizing all lateral forces. I mean, like you're putting Dude, your spine out there on blast if you don't have that support. Look at look at athletes that have to actually perform. Look at grapplers. Look at boxers. Look at football players when they're lean. Uh, look at all these different athletes and look at their obliques. They're well-developed. They're strong because you need that to perform. And the ancient Greeks even knew, and even knew this. When you look at the statues of, of uh, what the ancient Greeks carved, of like Hercules, for example, or David, for example, who and they kind of you know they 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 sculpted these they sculptures. Could have gave them a more impressive piece. They, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that was what weird. What the hell was that's, that? All that's about. a different story. Yeah. Uh, I think they considered small small penises. It was a aesthetic. Thing back then, huh? they, said they thought it was aesthetic. Okay, but they built uh, they put big obliques on them. The, the sculpture of Hercules. He's got these this thick, strong, lean core with these strong obliques. And when you see that in real life, uh, you know that person's pretty strong. So. This fear of developing the midsection, I have yet to meet anybody ever where I looked at them and I'm like, oh, wait, you know, you probably should stop working out your midsection because yeah. it's crazy. Look, it's, it's too, too developed. Muscular. Oh I've my never God. seen that before. Yeah. So this whole fear of thinking in your waist, like get the fuck out of here! Like this is it's ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's it's silly. And the and the more you squat and deadlift, like you said to start with, you're just gonna make your back and your butt, your the butts, your butt and hips and legs are gonna be more impressive because you squat. Your back is gonna be more impressive because you deadlift and that it, those two things being drastically different is going to well and you're not setting yourself up for massive pain later on right, in life right. like a fucking idiot yeah don't listen yeah. to those guys stupid quick commercial break you guys we keep getting asked all the time how can i support the mind pump family here's one of the best ways you guys can you guys love that chimera coffee that we have chimera coffee with a k you go to chimeracoffee.com put in the discount code mind pump for 10 percent at the checkout also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to bigtopbeardcompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to bengreenfieldfitness.com forward slash nature bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. All right. Next up is from Sarah Gets Fit Recovered. What are you most afraid for your kids with advertising in the fitness world today? Oh, geez. Um, for, for me, uh, especially for my, my daughter, although this is more and more true for boys um, as well, nowadays I'm really afraid that my kids will compare themselves to the uh, to the Insta stars. Yeah, to the unattainable standards that we that are that are projected. Through media, and I'm not even as afraid of advertising as I am of social media. Social media mm-hmm. is much more powerful than a commercial. Um, you know, nowadays it's just it used to be commercials and stuff like that. Now it's all social media stuff. And um, 
you know, they've done lots of, they've already done studies on this where they find like girls, the, the longer, the, the more time they spend on Instagram, the more depressed they become, the more their self-esteem drops, uh, they, you know, their, their body image goes down. Boys are starting, you're starting to see this with, with, with men and boys uh, as well. And it's just this false um, perception that that is your value. And when you're in fitness or you, you, you want to look fit or you want to be fit and you're looking at all these pictures, so much of the value is placed on appearance and so little of the value is placed on knowledge or wellness or how you feel or even performance uh, for that matter. It's all about appearance. And when you compare yourself to these pictures, the funny thing is when you meet a lot of these people in person, and this is just 100%, like we're, we, you know, we host a podcast, it's a fitness podcast, we have the just the blessing of being able to meet all these influential fitness stars. But I'm going to tell you something right now. They're way less impressive in person than they are in pictures. And that's by design. I mean, if you're taking a picture of someone, you're not going to put a picture. You're going to maximize the effect of that picture. And that's everything from lighting, pump, Photoshop. diet, you know, Photoshop, yeah. you know, digital, you know, alterca- alterations it of still photos. happens. And not only does it still happen, but it happens more often than not. And then you meet these people in your per- in person. You're like, whoa, I don't. They don't look a lot like you know what I what I had pictured them to look like. Hmm. So it, that's really what 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 worries me is that my kids may, you know, be- think that these are the, the ideals that they need to attain, and if they don't have these crazy genetics and if they're not in this you know always in these extreme dieted states and you know i don't want it to motivate them to take you know diet pills or anabolics or anything like that uh to try and look like you know what they think they need to look like in order to be you know attractive so that's that's my my biggest sure yeah i mean for sure like the whole vanity side and uh the aesthetic world like i mean it's great to look good but at the same time yeah it can get i mean honestly there's just so much misinformation uh, out there that I feel like we're just always going to have to be in their ear. You know, it's, it's just like what we do right now. Like I'm afraid of all of it. Cause I just don't see like many people, um, spouting off really good information. That's popular. You know, like it's, we're finding all these people on our own and we're putting them on our show and we're like, yeah, somebody that gets it. And, and, and it's telling things that are like, you know, it's solid information. Um, I just, I hope that they I guess I hope that I don't detour them away, you know, from being uh, over overbearing with, you know, um, my philosophy and, and just my experience and all that. I want to be more uh, let them sort of uh, be inquisitive towards me and and, and really want to learn, um, you know, if it's not for me, it's from somebody that like I I trust and like I, I find them, you know, somebody to sort of model after. Uh, whether it's a sports pursuit or whether it's just lifestyle pursuit or, you know, just, just healthy living and eating and, uh, you know, like just better practices. But yeah, dude, I, I'm honestly, I'm afraid of it all. I just, I haven't seen anything good. Uh, you know, it's very small. It, it is. Do you guys think that we are kids? Um, and Adam, you too. I know you have kids, but well, I, I'd like to hear I, your opinion. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm so scared of this. It makes me not want to have kids, dude. I'm not kidding. Like this is, you talk about, some of the reasons uh, why I'm not I'm not like uh, interested in having children. This is one of them. Uh, I think, and I don't want to be like all, um, you know, doom and gloom. Yeah, right. Like in, you know, everyone has got kids and wants kids so bad. <laughs> but we I, w- to piggyback off of what Sal was saying, man, we're in, and I'm I'm in, I just happen to be in the middle of reading a book called Irresistible right now. Fantastic book, and it talks about tech. And the addiction, and the way, and the how we've created it to be uh, addictive, and man, it's it's scary to think that we're not we're only what nine or ten years into the Facebook generation. We have no fucking clue what the long term effects are going to be like. We know uh, what magazines did and advertising and marketing did in the 50s, 60s and 70s and we know what it what kind of issues it's caused with people uh as far as image issues and bulimia and anorexia and stuff like that. I'm scared to death on the generation that does not doesn't know anything else but social media that was born with a phone that was born with Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook and is doesn't doesn't go through a day without picking the phone up on average, which people the average is like fifty something times a day and over two hours a day 
of time that is being, and that's the average right now. And that's, by the way, on a crazy increase right now. So, I mean, you're talking about these kids come high school time, you know, your guys is when they hit high school. Time. This is something that, do you police it? Do you, how do you, how do you manage that? I, I would it's be scared. Fucking, it's new territory. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's such new territory. And I think it's, it's, it's a lot scarier than I think anyone talks about. And I, I well, feel even more passionate about it going through this well, book and going like, whoa, I never thought of it like that. Well, trip off, trip, trip off this, right? You have kids growing up now posting, uh, selfies, lots of selfies, um, and, and, you know, guys, if they're working out, they're posting with their shirt off and then mm-hmm. girls, especially because it's reinforced through attention are posing, you know, provocatively or trying to look cute or sexy or whatever. When we were kids, cause this isn't, it didn't exist. It wasn't that long ago. You know, it's one generation ago. If you were a kid that took lots of selfies and photos like that, like th- that was kind. Of, that was very strange. It yeah. would be very, very strange you for could, a girl. Could you, you get your ass kicked? Could you imagine fifteen years ago in <laughs> in, in high school or whatever? Oh my if God. You were, I would tackle some, that if guy. If somebody like took a, a camera and like set it up on the thing and put the timer on it and like, yeah. <laughs> and you and you walk by and you yeah. saw that, you'd be like, "What the oh, fuck?" Okay. Like, oh, we, like that. At one point. That became very normal. Like how how normal is it we right now? We accepted that. How, ah. how and I, I remember I remember the first day this happened. I'll never I've, and it, I remember it hit me like I was like whoa, this is like so normal that this dude didn't even stop doing it. Yeah. Like I walk in the bathroom and you know oh, now they hand you their phone like hey bro and they'll ask I, you people yeah. will ask you you'll go in the bathroom like, hey bro can you take a shot can of me you take real quick? a video of me doing the Smith machine press real it's quick? like whoa it's become so normal that it's not weird to see at least three I've actually gone into the golds ba- golds men's bathroom and actually seen people lining up and waiting for the mirror for the mirror no take, you didn't no oh, way, yes dude oh, oh yes yes that's that's happening. Happening. the mirror yes. good lighting two, two three dudes shirts off <sighs> waiting for this guy to get his selfie so i can now come in and get my selfie hurry up bro i'm losing my pump because yeah, we man. know that this is the best mirror with the best lighting in the entire gym and anybody who's taken one or two selfies in that gym knows that and so wow. literally people during that's a crazy. busy time will have to wait for the other guy to get and well, it, and it's all fucking normal Dude, Where think, it's like, whoa. Think about like, this. No, it's think, not normal. Think about this. Like, imagine when we were kids, you're 18 years old or whatever, you know, you're, you're a teenager, and there's a girl that's taking pictures of herself, like, in her bikini and looking hot and smiling, and she's, like, sending it out to people. Yeah. Hey, guys, check this all out. Like, Everybody be like, what the look, fuck is check wrong? me out right now. Yeah, they'd be like, what is wrong yeah. with that girl? Like, yeah. why is she doing that? It's like the equivalent. But that's yeah. what you do now. She's, like, going to thrifties and getting, like, a Polaroid or whatever, like, uh, getting her pictures developed and then, like, putting it in the mail and sending it to everybody. You know, like, you'd be like, what this crazy bitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, like, like I wanted this so bad. It's, yeah. cr- it's crazy to me, and what really makes it crazy and what really scares me is I know, like, you know, my, my daughter's adorable. She's cute. And she'll maybe maybe she'll be really pretty when she grows up. And she might post a picture on social media. And, you know, young dudes are young dudes, and they're going to like the fuck out of it. And girls are going to like the fuck out of it because she's cute or maybe she's posing in a certain way or whatever. And it's going to reinforce to her that her it's like value... A, it's like a value system, yeah. Her exactly. value is her appearance. Yeah. It's reinforcing, and this is a this is already a problem that we've identified for generations now. Before social media, we've identified that, especially with with young girls, uh, that and women, that their value is their appearance, and this is a shitty thing. This is a shitty side effect of the you know the the advertising that happens in a free market system. For, for, for example, it's a side effect of it, and it's a nor- it's a horrible one mm. where you believe that a, so much of your value is on your appearance. And it's it's always been like this. I mean, let's be honest. For all the human history, of course, appearance makes a big difference. But never have we had this immediate feedback system, this reinforcement system, and never has it been like this for children mm-hmm. at such a high level to where, you know, this I'm going to check my phone or I'm going to check my, my social media. Ooh, I got 100 likes. I got 200 likes. And then tomorrow I have no likes and I need to put something to, up to get more of it. Yeah. Do you know there's so... You know how many pages there are on Instagram with 10,000, 15, 20,000 followers that don't monetize, have nothing to do with business whatsoever. Mm. I have friends who are, I have friends who have uh, daughters, right? Who are now in their, you know, teens and 20s even, who have 15,000 followers. Why? 
They're not selling anything. They don't know any of these people. Why do you have 15,000 followers on social media? Because it's, it's, it feels good. It's a, it reinforces these types of things. And now imagine a child grow, or kid or teenager growing up, getting reinforced that, they're, that how they look is all important. It's super valuable. And at some point, you know what happens to you? You get old. Everybody yeah. gets old. And you know what you're going to end up seeing? What you see with people, let's take a let's take a, a section of society where this is uh, extreme. Let's take a section of the populace where their image, how they look, is constantly reinforced uh, how important they are, and it really impacts how much money they make. Let's look at actors, actresses, and models. Do models, actors, and actresses do they age well? Do any of them have an easy time aging? They have a terrible time. No, no it no. is a horrible experience. That's why they always get hooked on drugs. Hooked on drugs, hooked on plastic surgeries. I mean, have you ever met a forty-something-year-old famous actress or actor? I have. Mm-hmm. I've seen them in person. Their faces don't move. They've got so much Botox and shit in their face. It's crazy. And this is going to happen to people, normal people, because they got that shit happening to them now well, with and, social and media. As a parent, well, now just, how do you handle this, right? Yeah. So here's the, you have to fucking police it, dude. Well, chew on this. You now. have to. So. And this is happening already now, and so you better believe the next ten years is going to be even crazier. That, uh, and we just had a great post on the forum just recently. Someone shared like it was an educational a video about the future of education and how you can build your own portfolio. So you do have some. I know uh, some guys that are our age and buddies of ours that have kids, and they actually have started their kids' Instagrams and their pages now and help so they can gain so they can build it because in the future that will be part of how you get hired so if i have so in 10 years sal and justin come to me i i own the big gym in the in the in the neighborhood you guys both want jobs you're both 17 18 years old you're fresh out of you know school and you're like Mm -hmm. hey i want to be a personal trainer equal education you guys are just as just equally smart look the same let's just say almost exactly the same this one has a following over here exactly but you have a fifteen thousand person following Sal has only got 500 friends. Mm. So I got and, a strategy for this, okay? I'm just going to get a bunch of like fake gold bars, and I'm going to take a bunch of pictures with that in the background of my kids and be like, oh, we're balling. Uh. <laughs> well, okay. Like, <laughs> so you make a joke. Of, just get like you make a joke of that. thousand people following. You make, you make a joke of that, but yeah. the generation that grew up with all this, so fast forward again, 10 years forward. You've had Facebook most of your life, right? Your your young adulthood into adulthood. You've now had kids that are coming up. So now you're savvy to it. You know how it helped you get a job. You know how it propelled you. Yeah. So what do you do? You go out and you buy a badass camera. You start taking shots. You start doctoring them up for your kid totally. to, to build his image up earlier on so oh his page God. starts to grow early so that he's got an even bigger falling when he becomes an adult so this so is why my kids are going to be entrepreneurs they're not going to do any of that shit thank you so here's so my biggest fear scary bro my big yeah. fear with this is no, a fuck working for other people anyway my kids are not allowed to have public social media pages until they're adults period end of story uh the the amount of predators online especially for you say adult jo- you, do you mean you're gonna manage that till 18 I'm not going to allow them to have public social media pages, and we'll see how this works out. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I, was no, I say, will not allow. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking right now, like a high school son uh, or daughter. No, no, no. I'll, I'll let them keep it private. Like I have a private one. Like you know, on Instagram, you can you can uh, you, you can keep it private. Mm-hmm. Like that's okay, but a public one is a big problem. Again, there's a shit ton of predators out there. I was just reading about some uh, huge yeah. you, you know bust that they just did out in L.A. about these pedophilia pedophiles that were finding kids on social media and stuff. And a lot of parents, they let their kids have these public social media accounts, which I think is crazy. Yeah, that is uh, crazy. So that's, that's number one. And number two, I think the best approach, as with anything, right? It's like when you're afraid of your kids having sex or doing drugs or anything else. Like if you do the whole doom and gloom, don't do it speech, they tend to rebel. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and teach them how to make it a business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm gonna teach them the business of it, like how you can make money off this, how you can Here's use how this. You to, manipulate the herd. That way, this way they could separate. <laughs> you know I mean? They could separate themselves from it a little bit and it's understand. You got to get the money <laughs> from your friends. Yeah, it's yeah. got to take their money, son. This is how you dupe them into everything exactly. you want them to do. So, so trip off this, right? This is a story I read a year ago, and I just looked it up because I want to make sure I was accurate. So, you guys know that China, so the, the you know the Communist People's Republic of China, is using social media 
to uh, they're going to start using social media to help control the population. Have you heard of this? No, I have no. So please, the, please share. So the Chinese China is so forward thinking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so China uh, is uh, going to give their citizens a score. And that score. Oh, and how popular they are. Sorry, you don't have enough friends. You're, you're, the, we, you're the weakest link. You're gonna Stan, have, you're, gonna, you're just not interesting. Bro, you're, you're going to kick you out of the country. You're <laughs> laughing right now, but check this out. This is scary, right? So people are going to get a score, and it's based on everything from the things that you like online to how you pay off your loans to the, the possessions you have, your education, your your body. Like they're going to they're going to amass all this data. And they're going to use it to give people a score based on what they think that you know is a good citizen, right? Based wow. on the, all right. This is, now great. Here's, this is great. Now here's what's crazy. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. Your score will determine whether or not you get privileges or you get privileges taken away. And here's the crazier part: if you associate with people with lower scores, it lowers your score. So yeah. now they've got <laughs> this is like a whole caste system, like all over wow. So now they're going to use social. Adam. You were a nine point five until yeah. you started hanging out with Sal. Now Listen, we're giving you a seven. I don't want you to affect exactly. my number. <laughs> yeah, exactly. get away from me. So they're going to use social pressures then to get people to do what they want, what the communist regime wants people to do, wow. to get these scores to do better, to get more privileges and stuff like that. Brilliant. Scary, scary shit. Wow. I'm not having kids. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hun. And it's when, confirmed. When in doubt, we, we'll, that or we'll adopt a 22 year old. Yeah, that's a, that's my other option. Oh, adopt a 22 year old. <laughs> I like that approach. Uh, right. Next up is Fit by Fabian. Hit versus list cardio. Which is best to get ready for stage? I just love the acronyms. You know what I mean? List. Hit sounds cool, but list Hit. list sounds <laughs> stupid. Yeah. What are you doing right now, list? I'm just listing. I'm just listing. I just like to list. Um, <laughs> it's the double S's that get you. List is my favorite. Yeah, so don't miss your list. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so which one's better? <laughs> this is we've had a I lot have of, a list. We've I'm had doing a, so much list. Yeah, there's we've had a lot of these questions lately where the answer is it depends. Mm -hmm. So here's the pros and the cons of each. From in my opinion, the pros of hit is it. Uh, it Burns a lot of calories, short period of time, so you don't need to spend as much time doing it. Um, improves uh, performance a little bit better uh, if you're performance based. If you're trying to get ready for stage, that doesn't really matter. So who cares about that? Uh, there may be a muscle sparing effect from hit under certain in certain certain circumstances. Now with lists, uh, the uh, the the positives are uh, it's easier, it's not as intense, but it takes a little longer. If your workouts are super intense anyway, it may be more appropriate to do lists because if you're already pushing your body to the red line, to the limit with your diet, with your weights, especially if you're getting on stage, and then you're going to go expend intense energy doing sprints and stuff, they may push your body out over the edge, whereas a walk or low-intensity cardio is not going to affect your central nervous system as much. And you'll still burn, you know, that type of cardio. Well, don't you do neat primarily, Adam, and then like towards the end, like getting up into, you know, the last like peak week or whatever. It's when you start experimenting with hit. So uh, kind of. Uh, first of all, this is funny because we were Katrina and I were talking about this last night. And I think it's crazy if you are a competitor uh, and you don't own a wearable. Uh, if you're an average person and you're anti-tech and you don't want to do it and whatever, what, what, that's fine. I'm, I don't. But if you're a competitor and you're not using a tool like a wearable and you're asking questions like this, I think it's crazy to me because I and I was just sharing this with my my pro buddy. Like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you you do all these these routines of cardio and stuff like that, but every fucking day is so unique and different. Like. That is how I decide if I'm doing lists, hit, or I'm just going to do neat for the day because there are certain days where I get up two hours earlier. I stay up two or three hours. I have to walk in the mall. I have to go grow grocery shopping. I had to clean something up in the yard of the house. And all of that makes a huge difference in your total caloric expenditure. So if you are dieting for a show and you're on a meal plan that your coach puts you on that is the same amount of calories every day to get you to lose a certain amount of weight, then your neat list and hit should reflect that. So if you're not tracking and paying attention to that, you're already you're already losing the battle here. So I think it and any pro that doesn't do that, they're following their bro science of I've done this before, it works for me, but they really don't understand the science of what they're doing. So 
when I start to get ready and cut for a show, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. So if you're not paying attention to my Insta story, you're going to watch exactly how I introduce. Pay attention, bitch. <laughs> you're you're going to see exactly how I introduce cardio. I'm not doing any cardio right now. But if you've watched, when I first started, I was averaging about eight to 10,000 steps a day. And that was me not trying to move extra. I actually went out of my way to be sedentary, to not go walk on the treadmill, not you know take extra steps, park further away in the parking lot, just track. So I would track for the first week, see what my average movement is. I was averaging eight to 10,000 steps. As I start to decide I'm going to start leaning out, getting ready for a show, I then start to slowly increase my steps. So you're neat, like Justin was saying. So I'm just worried about that. No cardio, no list, no hit, none of that yet. I'm just starting to move more. And I'll do little things like, park farther away in the at, in, at the gym i'll park way far away we'll have to where i have to walk an extra 500 to a thousand steps to get in the gym and get out of the gym i'll go grocery shopping i'll do extra chores around the house little things that start to just increase the movement then the first bit of any sort of cardio that i introduce is 12 to 15 minutes of hit and when i do it i do it strategically i add three days a week on top of wherever my current steps are. So if I'm now up to averaging 16 to 18,000 steps, which is about where I'm at now, I'm almost to this point, by the way, where I'm going to start to introduce three days a week of 12 to 15 minutes hit. So post-workout, I'll go over, do 12, 15 minutes a hit, I'm done, no cardio. I'll do that for a couple weeks, probably about two, since that's about all it takes for the body to start to get adapted to your, your cardiovascular training. Then I'll start to add in some lists. And lists for me is almost like neat. So they're, list is low intensity uh, steady state cardio, right? So walking. So I'll get on the treadmill now and I will actively walk for 45 minutes to an hour. But all of it is all relative to my movement in the day. I won't do any cardio if I just like, we just had, where did we just go? Katrina and I went somewhere and I had like a 20,000 step day. And if that happened during this process, guess what? That would be the day that I wouldn't do any lists. I wouldn't need to because I actually burned an extra 800 calories just through moving throughout my day. So why would I add the cardio on top of that? I don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. My body's already burning more than I, I, I need it to. I would definitely do it on a day or guess what? We were in meetings. We had to fly to Florida. We had to do something that r made me stay sedentary for a majority of the day. So then I would do lists, and the amount of time that I do the lists would be dictated off of how much movement I did in the day. So when I hear competitors that aren't tracking this and aren't paying attention to this, it blows my mind because they get so caught up in all the acronyms of lists, hit, you know, high intense or doing long uh, bouts of cardio and doing the ropes versus the stairmaster versus the elliptical and it's like dude you don't even know the difference between monday and thursday your movement but yet you're worried or you're asking oh is this cardio better than that cardio like you need to figure out how much your body is moving and burning first and forget about if the tool is exactly precise you're looking for the consistency in your movement you don't understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. glad you used the the you explained the acronym because I, I just realized there may be some listeners who don't know what the di like what hit is and what list is. So list is the long steady state low intensity cardio. Hit is the high intensity short uh, interval bouts, training interval type of uh, of cardio. Here's the other thing you want to consider if you're getting ready for stage. You know, competitors on stage tend to they look at cardio like it's this magic fat burning thing that they do. All you're doing is you're burning calories, okay? You're trying to burn calories with cardio. Couldn't you just eat less calories too? What? I mean, couldn't you technically, no. like, you know, you've got this competitor who's eating, you know, one and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight, and there's way too much protein. Let's break Can't the, they just stop let's like, break doing, the science, doing that? <laughs> let's break the science down on why I do that opposed to doing cardio. And I'll explain this because I think this is important that people understand this. I am less likely to lose muscle by reducing my caloric intake and just walking and being and doing focusing on my neat than I am to eat less calories and push my body harder on the treadmill. We've talked about this on the show before. If you do lots of cardio, you are sending a signal to your body that it is not advantageous to have all this muscle that you built on the off season. So I don't want to do a ton of cardio if I'm trying to lean out. Sure, it helps burn lots of calories, like Sal was saying, 
but it would be way more advantageous to reduce the caloric intake and keep my intensity lower. I'm more likely to hold on to my lean dude, body mass. Dude, what, what, how big of a role do you think mm. the overuse of cardio well, you're confusing plays? Your body. Well, think about it. The overuse of cardio with a competitor getting ready for stage, because I've seen competitors 12 weeks out already doing an hour of cardio every single day. Like, what role do you think that plays in them destroying their metabolism? Oh, a big role. And not, and not only that. It's crazy. I mean, you could technically get shredded. You definitely could get shredded without a single bit of cardio. Mm-hmm. It's the, it's just, you're already lifting weights, so it's not like you're not active. I'm not talking about someone who's lazy and doesn't do anything. You're lifting weights probably six days a week anyway. Think, think cardio for me is uh, having nitrous. If I'm, in, if I'm a, a, a car racer, right? And I, I, all the real work is in building the engine, the good tires, aerodynamic. You've done all the work to engineer the perfect car for speed. Car racer. And you've also got this can of 50 shots of nitrous. But all you got is 50 shots of nitrous. That's all you got. You can And you can try and shoot it every single day leading up there until it runs out and see where you're at. Or you can hang on to it and use it when you when you need to to actually get a little bit more out or lean this out. Is how I beat all you guys at off road. Well, I use this analogy <laughs> yeah. because when you're com- when nitrous. you're competing, it's totally different than the average person who's just trying to get in shape. When I'm competing, I have a date. I have to look a certain way on stage, and I want to know that I got. I want to know that I got that nitrous there. For those final couple weeks, if I notice that I did my timing is off, if I come down to the last two weeks and I go, oh shit, I should be a little bit leaner than where I'm at right now. I'm a little behind schedule. Oh, guess what? I haven't done any cardio. This is awesome. Yeah. I I now have this that I can implement into into my routine. That's going to really help. Now, that same person who's already do had has been doing an hour of cardio, like Sal said, for their last six weeks of their prep. They, they're in the same predicament as I am, only their body is so adapted and, to that. And all they can do now is add more cardio, which just sends a bigger signal that they need to be more efficient and maybe lose muscle. It's just, it's just cardio should definitely be used as an emergency thing if you're getting on stage. You're already lifting weights. You're already active. Now, if, if you just want to be healthy, it's good to just Totally be different, right? Totally yeah. different. And like, if you want to be, improve your VO2 max and your endurance, mm-hmm. then cardio should be used uh, for performance. Sports but, specific, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but yeah to, that's different, right? But totally to get different. ready for stage, and here's what happens with cardio very quickly, actually. As you're burning more calories doing cardio consistently, your body's metabolism actually slows down to match mm-hmm. the calorie yeah. expenditure. Now, this doesn't happen with resistance training. Because although while you're burning calories with resistance training, your body can slow its metabolism down to match the output, you're also sending a signal that it needs more muscle, and that more muscle in turn burns more calories. So resistance training speeds up metabolism, cardio slows down your metabolism. And the last thing you want to do going into a stage is just hammer your metabolism. I mean, how many competitors have you run into, you know, female competitors who are eating 1,000 calories? Lifting weights for an hour and doing an hour of cardio a day up until uh, working up to a contest. It's ridiculous. It's, it's crazy. It is crazy. And I, I, I do want to make a point that this is when you're talking about stage, you're talking about a competitive sport. Totally. Rules of health are different. Okay. So somebody who does cardio because they want to be like for overall health and cardio condition, someone who wants to do it for sports, like Justin said, totally different. When you ask me a competitor, uh, question specifically for getting up on stage, I'm going to say, where the fuck is your wearable and why are you doing cardio? That is should be a tool that you want to save in your arsenal and it's there for that. I need to, the last few weeks, ramp things up. Otherwise, I want to figure out, I want to manipulate everything through my resistance training, the volume of my training, and my uh, my nutrition. I want to manipulate everything. I want to save that cardio because like Sal said, it does not take very long for the body to adapt to whatever, whether it be list, hit, or what. no matter what type of cardio you're doing, the body figures it out really quick and becomes very efficient. Take that waist trainer off, bitch. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next question is from Justin Lackey. 
How do you reconcile the fact-based information you share on the show with someone like Paul Check, who actively rebukes all scientific understanding? <laughs> Somebody didn't like Wait, didn't what? like uh, Check uh, there. That's hilarious. Uh, so, I don't know if I would say he rebukes uh, scientific understanding no, at all. If anything, he so. First off, I don't think anybody is infallible, so including Paul. Mm. I like Paul a lot as a person, and I respect a lot of what he has brought to the wellness world. Paul Check, in my opinion, is the godfather of the wellness world, the, the, the holistic wellness world. This guy's been doing this stuff way before it was popular. Paul Check introduced the physio ball to exercise. He talked about... You know, using fats in your coffee to slow down the absorption before anybody else did. He talked about gut health and microbiome health before anybody else did. Um, you know, and and when he was doing this, he was laughed at. He was he was laughed at, and made fun of. And these are things now that we take for granted. Things that we all now accept as science and is important. You know, well, Paul I want to yeah, I want to know specifics. Like he's he's saying like you know like he brought up things that were not within the scientific well, this, understanding. Well, when he talks, this, when this he talks about I, spirituality yeah, and stuff so like that, I get but. I get where what he's trying to say by that because there are things that Paul will say but still that was outside of like a regular conversation about like scientific practices that he applies. Well, this is what Paul does a lot of. And so I get, I'm going to help kind of defend this guy a little bit but then I'm also going to check him because no, no, no pun intended. Yeah. Right. Whoa. So, whoa, does what, that, that works so from? well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the deal. Like, Paul absolutely is science based. Yeah. That's but then, what he thing. does from all the science, which he has, he gets a, like bored with science. He's he has, like, oh, he has a ton of it. He's also the guy who is theorizing other things <laughs> and going beyond where, where where science has proven yet. And so, when you when a guy like myself listens to him. And you hear him and you're like, oh, shit, that's right on. That's right. Whoa. Where are we going now? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Like that's I that is way beyond the question or the answer that I was looking for. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, rebuking science. He's he's talking about theories that, in my opinion, make a lot of sense. Are they for sure? Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I also don't know they're wrong either. And I do know that the foundation of uh, everything that he talks about is very science. -based. Well, here's what's funny: if you yeah. if you were to take uh, his course, especially the first uh, couple courses, because once you get to the later ones, then it gets esoteric as well. From my understanding, I've never taken the course, but it's from my understanding. But if you take his early courses, it's very very science based. If you t if you ever meet Paul and just get on a scientific discussion about the human body, biomechanics, anatomy. Mm -hmm. The digestive system, the hormonal system, all you know, psychology, all these different things. He is he's very very science based. The problem is he gets bored with that. So when we have him on the show, honestly, that's what I think it is. Yeah, when we get him on the show and we're like asking him questions about exercises and biomechanics, he'll answer it for two seconds and then he goes off onto mm -hmm. his esoteric stuff, which is not science. It's the opposite of science and doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just you know how do you. How would you discuss those esoteric concepts of like spirituality and all those different things? How do you discuss those on a scientific, you know, using the scientific method? I don't think you can necessarily, right? So he kind of comes across that way. But here's the other thing about, about our show um, is that we have people on our show that we like, but that doesn't mean we agree with them all the time. Right. Um, we, we just like the people. And, you know, we had... We had the polar opposite of Paul Check in in this realm on our show too, Lane Norton. We had a four hour episode with Lane. You put Lane and a Paul uh, and Paul in, in 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 a room together, and they probably turn into a black hole because this, there's there's they because they're they're <laughs> yeah. such polar opposites. Yeah. Who knows? They probably spin around it's each other. Supernova like, explosion. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? Like, but we like them both. We think they both bring interesting perspectives. Um, and we, we like also to provide we like that. To, to I our like audience. to challenge everybody's thought process, and I think that uh, it's not fair to make a statement that he doesn't like live in the science realm because he absolutely does, and that's the foundation, like you guys mentioned. It's just that he challenges the thought process, and it goes really out there, and it's really hard to to, to sit and listen Paul, to some of those. Ideas. Paul is not the best 
communicator. Yeah. No, so that's that's well, the truth. So he, I, I think it's very that. I think it's very simple minded also to rebuke a person just because you don't agree with everything they say. I right. mean, like you just gave a great analogy. You just dismiss them, you know, yeah. somebody right away. Lane, just Lane and Paul may not be the two best friends and may not hang out with each other, may totally disagree on. Many, but my that's one of the things that we pride ourselves yeah. on at Mind Pump is that we are very open minded, and there are qualities that I absolutely love about Lane Norton. There's qualities that I absolutely love about Paul Check even though their ideologies may be completely different. Like right. that to me, that's so small minded that you would think like, Oh, why would we bring someone on? Like we're going to bring people on a show a lot that I don't agree with everything yeah. they say. Like somebody was Plus trying it's to, it's more interesting. I, I there mean, was some little the confirmation bias, everything, you some, know, like, some little troll was trying to start some shit between uh, Lane and I, cause I said some shit about Lane on the show. I'm like, there's nothing that I've said on the show about Lane that I wouldn't fucking tell Lane to his face. I had dinner with the motherfucker just like a week ago. So you don't know anything about our relationships with these people. <laughs> People and like what yeah. we think about them. If they're on our show, we fucking like something about them. There's so, and we believe that there's something about their message that people can take away from. They they don't need to line up with every view that we have. In fact, that's how you get confirmation bias. That's how you get people that get stuck in a dogma because they're not willing to expand and not think outside the box and maybe maybe listen to people that actually conflict with some of their views. I you mean, know, we just that's we just, how you grow. We just got back Absolutely. from from Tampa and we met with uh, Ben Pikulski and we had great conversations with him. And Ben Pikulski's mantra is feel the muscle, don't train the movement. This is like the opposite of a lot of times what I say, which is train it's the like movement. Nails on the chalkboard. And don't write. Yeah. And especially the opposite of what Justin would, would say. Yeah. Now. But do we listen to him? But we I do. Love the guy. We hear it. And are there takeaways from it? Yeah. Absolutely. You know it's funny when we you know it's funny thing that what happens when you're open minded? You end up learning shit. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Right. Yep. And um I, I guarantee you we're gonna have a guest on our show at some point that we disagree with completely. I guarantee we'll have a guest on our show at some point mm -hmm. where we don't agree with a damn thing they say, but the reason why we want them on the show is so that we can debate and discuss, and maybe out of the debate and discussion that happens on the show, people will learn something or it'll spark someone's interest to learn something or to look deeper. So I, we don't agree with everything Paul says. No. Part of it's because I don't understand everything he says, right? and part of it is I may actually disagree or uh, maybe I communicate it differently. The same thing is true with... Lane Norton and you know Tom Billu and some of the other guests that we've had on the show. So, I, you know, again, I disagree. I can't with the name. The, I can't think of one person I wouldn't challenge. You know what I mean? Like on like, something, right? On something. Yeah, absolutely. Like, come on. Like, that's if if you're not doing that constantly, then I I don't know. I'm worried about you. Yeah. You know, like if you're gonna just accept somebody, like oh, they're always like like you just like you put them up on this pedestal. Um, well, guess what? They're going to fail you, mm -hmm. you know? So you just have to like, you have to take, um, you sort of compartmentalize it and take and extract the truth in, in a lot of what they're saying. So like it, both, both of those examples are great examples, like Paul checks and, you know, your Lane Norton's cause they obviously are passionate in different arenas Dude, and you, for a reason, you know, it's and fun. both are fucking bad brilliant. Ass, both know? are badass dudes yeah. in their own way. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's what, God, I mean, I have, I, maybe what's made me passionate about personal training is I love humans, dude. I love people. I love how unique everybody is and what makes everybody tick, man. I think that is something that I, I always want us to bring to this show is like, I don't ever want to, man, I remember when we also did, um, what was his name that we brought on for, we brought him on for internet marketing and we totally went into the evolution creation talk. Perry Marshall. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I know that freaked out some people because of his theories on that and got into these huge debates. It's like, dude, yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter like if I hundred percent. You're so firm on uh, creationism. You're so firm on evolution. Right. Like, like, dude, he's really? a, he's an intelligent, you got it all figured out. But he's a very intelligent man. And it's listening to him talk is awesome, dude. Yeah. I'm Whether I agree or disagree, I'm telling you, it's actually pretty. It's it's enjoyable if you allow yourself to be enjoyed by to enjoy it to listen to people with a completely opposite view from you. Mm -hmm. If you just stop for a second, and it's it's hard. But look, we just watched the documentary "What the Health," which was, and we sat through the whole thing. And you know what? <laughs> and you so know what? Bullshit! I I punch myself in the balls. I listen. The whole time. I listen to hear like. Like, I want to hear what their points are. Like, are they making good points? Now, they made very few good points, in my opinion.
but I enjoyed watching or hearing what their arguments are. I want to hear what their arguments are because then I don't know mm-hmm. what my side is well enough if I don't know what the other side is saying. Well, I think when you actually talked about it, I, it, we wouldn't have been able to do that because I felt that when you even discussed it, uh, you had such a great understanding of the passion behind the people that probably put that documentary together because mm-hmm. of their passion for saving animals. And when you when you fully understand, when you watch all of it with an open mind, even though it's totally opposite of what we it's believe and talk clear. about, yeah, yeah it, it is very very clear and you also have this compassion for them it's not like this oh that's a stupid documentary we rebuke it we want nothing to do with it it's it's ridiculous and i would never listen to that propaganda it's like hey you know what i remember you you just talked about this on the show recently you said you know when people are very passionate about something like some vegans are especially when it comes they look at animals like they look at humans and they would do anything to save them even if that means putting out something that like is a little biased like that documentary is it makes me have even more compassion for it instead of being so angry about it that it's bad information. It's like, hey, I get where they're coming from and I get how passionate they are about where they believe that they're willing to put some misinformation out there if it means that they can get three less people to eat meat because that's three animals that they could potentially save mm-hmm. and that's three lives that they could be saving and that it's worth it for them. Yeah, you know, I understand. And you know, the other thing you want to consider, when people rebuke scientific understanding, because I do that, I do that sometimes too. We do that in here too. For example, the current scientific understanding of uh, glyphosates or artificial sweeteners. If I was to look up the current scientific, you know, what what the FDA says, what the the the, the science, you know, the, the top scientific organizations will say, their current understanding of those things is so far it's safe and use those things. Now I'm going to rebuke them. Because there's other there's other things there's other threads of truth that I'm finding in some of my own research it just hasn't been accepted yet and I believe it'll change as we go along. If I were if this were the 1920s, okay, and I were rebuking the scientific understanding of of cigarettes, if I were sitting here saying, "Listen, cigarettes are addictive. Cigarette smoke causes cancer," I would be rebuking all scientific understanding at that time of cigarette smoke because at that mm. time. Doctors and scientists were saying it's not addictive and it doesn't cause lung cancer. So that's something else you want to keep in mind. When you hear someone rebuking scientific understanding, don't block them out because you think they're rebuking scientific understanding. They could very well be totally wrong and idiots, Mm -hmm. or sometimes you, you hear what they're saying and they point you in a certain direction. You start doing your own research and you go, oh shit, this is kind of crazy. Let's like leaky gut syndrome, you know, 10 years ago. I heard about leaky gut syndrome first 10 years ago. I brought it up to a lot of the doctors and, uh, that I trained. I trained a lot of doctors and surgeons. They laughed. They at you laughed on. and they yeah. said, it's, oh, that's bullshit. You know, that's made up. That's, uh, I don't remember what they call it, but it, it was basically bullshit. Guess what? It's starting to, not yet, but it's starting to become accepted. You're going to see in the next five to 10 years, it probably will be accepted. Now, at the time, you're crazy or whatever, but if you listened, like I did, I actually sat there and listened. And I said, wait a minute, this could very well be true. This doesn't sound like bullshit. A lot of these things that are happening right now we can't explain. This definitely could explain the thing. I don't necessarily believe that this may be the explanation, but I do think that they may be on the right track. And I definitely see how the current scientific understanding is wrong on this. It sounds like it's wrong in this respect. Well, then you you come out with better information. So Well, and circling back to Paul, what I think when Paul starts to get the kind of religious spiritual talk it really turns a lot of people away Mm -hmm. but i think the part of me that's so drawn to that is something that i found out in exercise science and being a trainer who was based off of that for most of my career i started to find out that actually that was the smaller piece and the psychological piece and the people's emotion and their and their relationship with themselves and all the shit that really science can't explain very well was more important to them getting their goals and getting seeing the results they need to and actually making an improvement it's in their more life. more transformative. Yeah, it was way more transformative. And, I, and when I started looking deeper into that type of stuff, which is tough for me to explain yeah. as a trainer, like, you know, getting... That in, hits your ego even harder. Right. Yeah. You know, and try explaining ego scientifically. Right. You know, it's you can't. It's really tough to do. But yet we know that that stuff plays a huge role in people's success or failure towards getting their goals. So when I hear someone like Paul talk that way, sure, I hear some stuff and I go, that sounds crazy. But 
a lot of good comes from what that man is talking about, and a lot of stuff can be taken away. I wish he he, he communicated it a little bit better. I wish I wish he cared. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit what people <laughs> think about him. That's what I love about the guy. Yeah. But he but I do think his message. Uh, there's a there's a lot of, there's a lot of powerful things that he says in there that that isn't science based. I've, I've just seen too many things now in the 20 years I've been in fitness and health. I've just seen too many things that came out and at the time were bullshit and it's not scientific and that's baloney fasting fasting is a great example did you know uh, if you're a younger listener you have no idea but when i first got into fitness if you you talked about fasting because it was good for your body and it detoxed your body and you need to fast to get rid of toxins whatever we made fun of it oh my God. it was bullshit the liver if does- you miss a meal you're losing muscle yeah well not only that but the liver does a great job of detox you're not toxic All what are right. you talking about like fasting there's no health benefits to fasting and here are these spiritual religious wellness you know weirdos were coming saying no you feel i have so much energy when i fast and i'm thinking like no you don't you don't have no food in you <laughs> you're fucking crazy like this is and guess what they were right yeah they were right now they may have communicated it in, in their language but they were right at the time. They rebuked all scientific understanding. And guess what scientific understanding says today? They were right. Fasting was right. So again, you got to be careful with, and I have so many examples. Like uh, I remember taking my kids to the doctor and they had a cough and the doc tells me, you know, oh yeah, if you give them some honey, that'll help with their cough. And I'm like, what? I thought that was an old wives tale. In fact, that's what I was told years ago that it's an old wife's tale. She says, no, we actually discovered that there's a compound in honey that suppresses the part of the brain that causes the coughing reflex. And so it helps with coughing. I'm like, well, fuck me. Would you look at that? So again, rebuking scientific understanding, not a problem. Just be open-minded and you may find out that uh, their information may be correct. Hmm. Uh, Check this out. Go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every single day and here's why you want to subscribe to that channel. When you subscribe, you get an alert right away with the title of the video and what we posted so you can stay up to date and learn how to train properly, how to eat properly, and how to stay open-minded so you can learn your body better. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on an episode like this one, the place to do it is Instagram. You can find our page. It's called Mind Pump Media. You can find our personal pages as well. I have one. It's Mind Pump Sal. Justin has a personal page. It's Mind Pump Justin. Adam has a personal page. Mind Pump Adam and Ju- and Doug has one. You want to guess the name of it? My- what is it? Mind Pump Doug. Wow. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.